Right. Hello, Nordic JS. Are you feeling good? Yes. You know, I was in Brazil with doing this talk like a few weeks ago, and then I joked when I asked that question that uh, there were kind of like, you know, a Swedish response to that question. And then I got like, <laughs> when hair flows so up, I'm gonna like, now that I'm home grounds here, I would like to ask that question again, and you go, are you good? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Makes me feel good. Oh, my computer is password protected. How secure. <sighs> All right. So, like any good Monad talk, I'm going to begin by showing you a slide that you will not understand at all. Uh, but uh, that's okay. Uh, during this talk, we're going to uh, work together and try to understand this slide. Uh, if you understand the slide right away, you can you know, go take a break, have a cup of coffee, because then you already understand everything that I'm going to tell you today. So, the two sentences on this slide are, a functor is something that you can map, and a monad is a functor that you can flat map. So we're going to try to chip away at these two sentences during this talk and hopefully understand them at the end. So I'm going to give you an overview of how we're going to get there. Uh, we're going to look at four different functors. Array, tree, stream, and promise. Uh, so all of these are functors because we can map them. So they all belong to the family called functors. And uh, the last two, stream and promise, they are also monads because we can also flat map them. So we're going to look at how map behaves on uh, all of them, the functors, and we're going to look at how map, flat map works on the last two, the stream and the promise. And that's all we're going to do today. So we're focusing on this sentence, or like more specifically map. We're beginning with map. Most of you have used map, but we're going to spend a lot of time in this talk to really geek out on the concept of map. And at this point, I'm going to start looking at my notes. So first of all, we're going to remind ourselves about what map really does. Uh, so a functor is a fancy pants word for uh, talking about stuff that can be mapped. For example, arrays in JavaScript, arrays have a method called map, and they can therefore be mapped. Arrays are therefore functors. And I want to talk a little bit about array map. Many of you know how it works, but now we're going to like really think about it. So let's say that we have an array of Portuguese words. And again, I'm reusing this talk from a Brazilian talk, and I didn't have time to translate these to Swedish. But uh, it's, it's chicken, cow, and corn. Now let's say that we want to make, uh, want to capitalize this array. We want the, an array of these, uh, but where the first letter is capitalized. And there is a handy helper function in Lodash that can help us do that. We feed in the word, and we get a capitalized version of that word out. Easy enough. Uh, we're halfway there. It's really good. Now, in order to uppercase the entire array, we can use map to do that. We pass the function capitalize into the map method of the array, and that gives us a capitalized array of Portuguese words, Portuguese food. Let's think about how this works. So map is a method on array that takes a single argument function. Now map is going to walk through every item in the Portuguese words. It's going to take that item. And it's going to feed it into the mapper that's capitalized in this case. I'm going to refer to this as the mapper. Uh, and it's going to take whatever comes out of that, and it's going to feed it into a new array. It's going to do this for every word, and it's finally going to return a 
array where every value has been transformed by the mapper. So let's think about this in a more conceptual way. You can think of an array as a set of boxes that it's glued together. And we can, we can put things in those boxes. And I know that's not a chicken, because they were out of chickens in, in the toy store. And you, yeah, give me a break. Uh, and we can put things in those boxes. And over here, we have a cooking function. So cook knows how to cook chicken, cow, and corn. It's a very good cooking function. Uh, but that's because he's a very specialized cooking function. In fact, he's so specialized that he does not know how to cook arrays of food. He only knows how to cook individual items. So in order to solve this dilemma, we put a map method in between the array and the cooking function. Now, map does not know anything about cooking, and map does not know anything about chicken, cow, and corn. But what map does is to take things out of arrays, shove them into mapper functions, take whatever comes out of mapping functions, shove that into a new array, and return that new array. And this is conceptually what mapping does. So we're trying to get our brains around this sentence. A functor is a word for something that you can map. So we thought about arrays so far. That's, uh, that's familiar grounds. But can we map something else? Can we invent a tree functor? Tree that we, we can map. Let's have a look at my family tree here. I am at the root of the tree. And below me are my parents, Eva and Mats, and my grandparents, Uwe and Sonja, and Anna and Gustav. I'm not including my great-grandparents great because it would be a big tree, and also because I'm a historyless millennial and I don't even know their names. But I know, do know that my grandmother, Sonja, was a pharmacist, and my grandfather, Uwe, was a postman that later in life got a very successful, successful career as a painter. Either way, we want to give my family tree the same treatment that uh, we uh, gave our array of Portuguese words. And by that, I mean that I want to capitalize them, not that I want to cook them. <laughs> so our end result here is that I want the family tree, but with every value capitalized. Like a good TV chef, I have prepared a function. Map tree. This is the entire source of map tree. It's actually not particularly interesting exactly what it does. Uh, I'm not going to go through it. It's, I'm only showing it to you so that you know that there's no magic going on here. It's just some JavaScript. It is recursive because I have the emotional need to impress you people. But it's still just some JavaScript. Uh, what is important is how we use it, like this. And this is going to give us just what we wanted, my family tree, but capitalized. And when looking at this example, I want you to start seeing map as a concept. If my slides work. No, they don't. They don't. This is supposed to say map as a concept. Uh, map is not just a method on array uh, or a function. It's broader than that. Map can be implemented as uh, a method on an object, like it is on array, or it might be implemented like it is, like we implemented with map tree, like this where it's just a simple function that takes a tree and a mapper as its arguments. And most functional libraries actually re-implement map uh, as a simple function, like this, so that you can call it like a straight function. So these two are, have the exact same effect, and both are valid. It's, the important thing about mapping is not 
the style that we implement in, it's that we get the concept right. So let's think about how map relates to, this is a bit weird, I think this is my internet connection. I've heard rumors that this Wi-Fi is it's actually like three Wi-Fi's, no? I went through this so that they should be like cached, but they're not. Does anybody have any Wi-Fi tips? <laughs> That's actually a great tip, let's do that. We were talking in the uh, in backstage how uh, there are only three hard things in computer science, and one of them is Wi-Fi for conferences. So okay, so there's this is exciting stuff. Come on, baby, it's resolving the host. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. What's the password again? Cats. You can't all so at the same time. Cats. Cats will rule the world. The right person to say it too. Cats. Cats will rule the world. World. All right. Exciting. Conference organizers, this will make me go over time. There we go. Start presentation. Oh! This was the last slide. Oh, everything works. <laughs> Whee! <laughs> All right. Now I just got to find the right page again and stuff. Right. Uh, blee, 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 blee. Right. I want you to start thinking about map as a concept. Um, map is not near a meter array. La 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 la. Okay. And they implemented map, and luckily enough. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So let's think about how map relates to tree and array. We have an array of, of uh, strings of Portuguese food. And we have this little function called capitalize that knows how to capitalize strings, uh, but it doesn't know anything about arrays. However, our friend map here knows how to deal with arrays. In fact, that's the only thing she knows about. She doesn't know anything about how to deal with strings and certainly not how to capitalize them. But that's cool because we can give her capitalize as her mapper, and they can work together to give us our capitalized array. And oh, up over here, in the same way, we have my family tree. It's lowercase, uh, so it needs the help of capitalize. But again, capitalize does not know anything about trees. Uh, but that's cool, because we have written a sister to uh, array.map, the map tree function that we looked at before. And together, they can give us our family tree capitalize by reusing the same capitalize function, mind you. And what you're looking at here is the entire point of functors. It allows functions to operate on data structures even though they were not specifically built for that. So we had this array that we wanted to capitalize, and we have this function that can do it for the individual items. And if we didn't have functors, we would have to do some kind of gluing here to get them to work together, perhaps using a for loop like this. But if something is a functor, this work has already been done for us with map. And the, this is the reason why languages that are written in a functional style, or programs that are written in a functional style, are surprisingly little code. I really want to stress here that this is not less code because it's less syntax, 
or shorter syntax. It's less code because there is actually genuinely less logic to write. And the reason for that is that these are small, simple functions that interoperate very well together. They just click. So we don't have to write any glue logic to make them work together. And so far in this talk, we have learned that arrays in JavaScript are part of the functor family uh, because they can be mapped. And we have made a tree mappable to demonstrate another example of a functor. Now we're going to look at a third functor called stream. You might be familiar with streams, or you might only have heard of them, uh, being used in uh, hipster libraries like Bacon, Rx, or Highland. Uh, so just in case, I'm going to give you a crash course on what streams are. I personally think of streams like arrays, but they're a sync. Um, that's a very abstract thing to say, so I'm going to show you some code. This is a pretty dumb example that I made to show you the idea behind the stream. And we're going to walk through it from the bottom. Have some trickery with my mic there. What this code does is that after one second, it's going to print Galinia. And after two seconds, it's going to print Vaca. And after three seconds, it's going to print Milio. And it does that because up here, we have passed a callback to onValue uh, that will print out food. Uh, and up here, we have called create stream of food to create the stream object. And if you look inside create stream of food, we'll see that it simply sends the different words to the callback, but using a delay that it creates using set timeout. So food stream is an object that will give us a series of Portuguese words, but not right away. It's going to give them to us in the future. So we have to listen to the array by passing a callback to the onValue function. And that callback is going to be called with these values as they arrive. And this is the essence of what a stream is. There are many different functionalities built into the stream libraries, like Bacon, Rx, or Highland, or whatever. But in the end, a stream is a pattern to deal with the problem of having a set of values that arrive to you whenever they gosh darn it feel like. So an example would be chat messages. It could be uh, events. It could be logs in Redux. It's the view state. And there's many different examples. Uh, I want to show you the exact same example, but implemented using the Bacon JS library. So there are many forms of streams, uh, but in Bacon, there is a Bacon bus stream that I like a lot. It has an on value method, uh, just like our previous example. And it also it, it takes a callback to get values out of the stream, and it also has a push method, like the uh, uh, like an array for getting values into the stream. And I like the buzz because it feels kind of sort of like an array, except that it's a sync. But we're not here today to think about uh, streams specifically. We're here to think about what functors are. So remember that a functor is a word that we use to describe something that we can map. And pretty much all streaming libraries implement map on their stream implementations. And uh, Bacon.js uh, is absolutely no exception to that. So let's do the same thing to our stream here that we did with our array and tree. Let's capitalize the first letter. And these two lines here, that's all there is to it. 
We require in low dash, and then we pass in capitalize to the map method on the food stream. Map will return a new stream, but where every value has been fed through capitalize. Notice that this is the exact same principle as mapping trees and arrays. Mapping an array will return a new array, mapping a tree will return a new tree, and mapping a stream will return a new stream. The general concept is that map accepts a mapper function and creates a functor of the same type where every value has been uh, transformed to a new value by the mapper function. And perhaps you're starting to see kind of how this fits together. We have values that we want to transform, like uh, our Portuguese words, and we have functions that can transform them, but our values are often hidden or, or contained or kept inside of all these data structures. But if they are implemented like func with functors, functors act as a sort of like an array between our uh, stream and our capitalized function, which will allow us to have the capitalized function operate on the uh, different data structures without explicitly knowing what about these data structures. Lodash doesn't know anything about uh, Bacon, and Bacon doesn't know anything about Lodash, but because capitalize is a simple, pure function, and Bacon streams are functors, they just click perfectly out of the box. We don't have to write any glue logic, logic to make them fit. And this is the power of functors. So, how far are we in this talk? Let's remind ourselves uh, of the two sentences that we're trying to understand. A functor is something that you can map, and a monad is a functor that you can also flat map. Let's talk about flat map. Uh, here's here's not the hard part of this talk here. Uh, I'm going to give you the description of flat map, and it's tricky. And this is after lunch, so I want you to breathe and concentrate. Flat map is just like map, except flat map does not expect the mapper to return a value. Instead, flat map expects the mapper to return a functor containing the value. And flat map will take that functor and flatten it into its actual value. What the hell did I just say? That, fun that feeling of confusion, that's your friend, means you're learning. So you're doing good, stay with me. Let's build an example. Let's say that instead of capitalizing our Portuguese food words, we would like to translate them to English. And let's say what, that we have written a function that can do this for us using the Google Translate API. The exact code here is not very important. Uh, it does a fetch to the Google Translate API, and it parses out the, uh, the text bit of the JSON. What I would like to draw your attention to here is that it takes a word, and it resolves into a, uh, a promise that, or it returns a promise that will resolve into the translated word. So let's now go back to the stream example that we had before. I'm now going to remove capitalize and replace it with a call to get in English. Notice that we're using map here. Uh, we're not using flat map just yet. If I run this code, it's going to print something like this. That's not very useful. Map isn't very smart. It just takes whatever the mapper returns and shoves it into the stream, and that's just what it did here. But what if there was a version of map that knew how to get into the juice of these promises? What if there was a version of map that knew how to flatten 
those promises into their real values. Flat map. And this will still not work quite yet. Uh, remember that from the big ass sentence before that flat map wants its mapper to return a functor with the value in it. And get in English actually does that. It does return a promise, and promises are functors. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, but it's the wrong type of functor. The flat map of the bacon stream only knows how to uh, flat map other bacon streams. It doesn't know, automatically know how to translate to, to flatten all types of functors. However, there is a handy function in the Bacon, uh, Bacon JS library that can transform promises into, uh, into streams. Because conceptually, a, a promise is very much like a stream, but there's only one value that it returns. So we call bacon.fromPromise, and we pass in the promise into it, and we get out a stream, which the mapper returns to flat map. And flat map will flatten that value and pass it, is create a flattened stream, which we call on value on and console log out the values, and we get the translated words. Mission success. And also for kicks, we can mix map and capitalize back in, which will give us the values translated and capitalized. So again, map is just like map, but instead, flat map expects its mapper to return a functor of the same type that contains the value. And then flat map will take that value and treat it just like map, except that it will take every, uh, every functor and flatten it first. And then it will return a new stream containing those flattened values. There's a monster coming at me. Uh, so we talked about this sentence. Monad is a functor that you can flat map. And we talked about the stream monad. And I promised that you begin at the beginning of this talk that we would finish off with talking about the promise monad. So promises are kind of like streams, but they emit only one value. And promises, they've been around for a very long time. Uh, they were first introduced in jQuery. And in the last few years, uh, they've become part of the ES6 standard. So promises are probably the monad that you're most used to. You just maybe don't know that they are part of the monad family. Now, the clever of you might be thinking that hey, there's no map or uh, flat map on promises in ECMAScript 6. How could they possibly be monads? And there is an important thing that I have, up until this point, been protecting you from in this talk, and that is the fact that flat map and map might not exactly have those names. In Haskell, uh, it's called bind. And in some uh, languages, flat map is called chain. Uh, using the word bind in JavaScript would be insane because uh, we already have a function called bind called something completely different. Uh, and promises in JavaScript, uh, they take this freedom even further and they bundle map and flat map into a single function called then. So this is why I've been trying to get you to think about map as a concept in this talk because these, the, these concepts change around a lot, and they become jumbled together. So we need to think about map as a capability to get it to make sense. Anyway, this is the reason why there are many people saying that ECMAScript 6 promises are not strictly monads. But I think that is kind of like when some assholes go, like, mm, bananas are not strictly a fruit. They are, botanically speaking, a berry. And you're kind of like. <laughs> It's in the fucking fruit section. <laughs> but regardless of what you think, uh, 
I would like to show you this example uh, rewritten as a, a promise. Uh, so it just has one word now instead of three. We create a promise that resolves into vaca after two seconds. Uh, and we then pass get in English to the then method. And notice here that we're using then instead of flat map. So it, it will have the same effect. And also another interesting aspect here is that we don't bother doing any bacon from promise here because it's not needed. Because when food and get in English, that's a, get in English will return the same type of functor. Both of them are promises. So promises knows how to flat map other promises. We don't need to convert that. And we can also chain our calls to them. Just like array.map returns a new array, uh, promise.then, or promise.flatmap here, will return a new promise so that we can call then on it again. And that, in turn, will also return a new promise, which we call, call then on with a callback that prints whatever it gets. So notice now that we're using then for both of these. And this is because then will act both as flat map and map. If, it, uh, if the mapper returns a functor of the same type, it will act like flat map. And if it returns other, any other value, like capitalize does here, it will act as map. So it, it's both of them. So promises are fun monads, I think. Uh, it's just hard to see because they mix flat map and map together into single function that they call then. So we're back to where we started. A functor is something that you can map. And a monad is a functor that you can also flat map. So when a data structure implements map, it exposes a slot in which we can stick a function uh, that will allow us to have that function operate on the individual items in the data structure, even though it's not specifically built for that. Which saves us from a lot of glue logic that would otherwise be needed to sew all of these functions together. So I hope that this talk made you feel good in your brain. I uh, work at Spotify. Uh, if you don't know it, the majority of the uh, Spotify desktop client is written in JavaScript. It's just a big Chromium instance. Uh, and it's one of the more complicated and intricate uh, JavaScript applications in the world. So we uh, need ya. Uh, we are uh, currently, uh, <laughs> currently hiring in Stockholm and Gothenburg and uh, New York and San Francisco. So apply, apply. And also, finally, I would like to make a push for, uh, if you don't know me from before, I'm MPJ. I run a YouTube channel called Fun Fun Function, uh, where I post uh, stuff like this every Monday morning. Uh, so please check it out. And uh, that is all. Thanks so much.